Good afternoon, and welcome to the Light Lithium, Lithium 100. Love songs, meditation songs, and easy listening. Kick back and let the dulcet tones wash your stress away. And then I'll stress you out with some real estate. Well, hi there. <clears throat> Hope you guys are doing okay. Funny, I get that little cough right then, all of a sudden, right when the counter kicks down, the little light turns on. But hope you guys are having a good day. My name is Charles Ray Dawson. I'm the Associate Broker Residential Sales Manager of ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast, Episode 190. So the tone, the music that you were listening to when I first started was from my new YouTube channel that I love to listen to. This is Lo-Fi Girl. Hopefully I'm not going to get a copyright strike on this like I have before in the past. All right. But, you know, it's... This music in the background, okay, it's just so mellow. It doesn't have any words to it. It's really easy for me to sit here and just sort of chill out and get work done. Strongly recommend it. Link in the show notes below. But since it is completely screwing up my recording because I got way too much stuff going on this, I am going to close that window out and hopefully free up a little bit of server and processing power. See? Suddenly got a lot better. So, at least on my end, all right, I'm not doing this anymore. Okay, and hopefully this record, you're recording everything I say. So, anyways, so a lot of stuff going on. Okay, we're, we're looking at episode 190. I realized, hey, we got episode 200 coming it up. Wouldn't it be cool if episode 200 was going to be the week of the election. I checked. It's not. It's going to be like two or three weeks before the election. So, And I was going to go back and see, was I doing these during the last election season? And that's one of my little thing. my prep work I did not get done. But just checking it out right now, nope, 3.6 months, probably not. So... You guys have not seen me in the little middle of an election season, but honestly, my productivity just goes down to zero. I am no longer talking houses and zip codes and, you know, interest rates or anything like that. My brain is nothing but diving deep, deep into the cross tabs on counties that I don't even know where they exist, but they have a certain ratio that may or may not flip a swing state. So, and it's just going to get worse as the case gets on. <clears throat> but I was kicking around the idea of, you know, do we want to like have a, this is a state of real estate. This is the two parties. This is what they're saying they're going to do to make housing more affordable. This is what the other side does. Compare them to raise view of the world. You know, I'm not sure if I want to go there, but I got a couple more weeks to think about it. I got at least five. All right, but that would make a pretty good episode 200. So uh, if you're interested, comments below. I do read all these comments, both of them. All right, sometimes I even respond. Sometimes I call you, call people up if I know the number. Like, what the hell are you thinking? Take that off, right? You can't say that on my page. All right, but <clears throat> what do we have going on? Okay, so um, we're starting to see the interest rates come down. Uh, my client who's closing tomorrow in Maricopa, uh, she told me that um, the original rate that she got quoted is now much lower. Okay, not a five, but as close as you can get to as five and not be a five, which is pretty damn impressive to be honest with you. Okay, so that got me looking at a whole bunch of other numbers. So this is going to be one of those numbers heavy podcasts. All right. Um, so if you're not a numbers kind of person and you know, it's been more than 15 seconds. I already got the tag that somebody watched this, right? So you guys can go on and go check out Lo-Fi Girl. Just put on some mellow stuff. Or if you want to see where we're at and where we're going, here we are. Zero Hedge had an article this morning, and this is one of those people that, um, one of those not real estate pages that I read. This is more uh, um, the markets. And 
they're pretty heterodox and there's i i never trust anything they say about russia all right i, th I think they might be getting some of that really good uh putin money uh but um pending home sales limp off all-time record lows in august all right and they get i ripped the charts out so let's go to chart number one and you can see on chart number one a little bit of a lag on this. I wonder why that is. Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> this is U.S. new home family houses sold. Annual total is the green. Total existing home sales. This is all from NAR with their reporting. And then U.S. pending home sales index. All right. And they're all the way down here. So people are like, oh, my God, this is horrible. Now, remember, big chunks of time. This is going all the way back to the beginning of the century. <sighs> sort of hate saying that all right back in 2000 so we can see all the crash information here's your covid dip okay and now we're sending him not a lot of home sales okay this is you know all-time lows because people all really worked up about it and stuff like that right. but a couple things i want to point out this is right here when that interest rate drop-off happened okay and all of a sudden interest rates started spiking see purchasing bail down notice we are now below the worst of COVID. that mar that march guarantee you that's march okay that's when everybody and their dog suddenly canceled contracts all right now i buyers suddenly started canceling contracts and whatnot all right but you notice we popped right back up as soon as we realized wow if we're all going to work from home we need a bigger home all right and then we recovered out where were we before that all happened right about you know right in this range okay which strangely enough is the same range we were at right before the 06 07 08 run up make sense now remember i will always tell you guys always tell you guys here's when we knew the crash was coming this is when the rest of you guys figured it out then we have the dead cat bounce so Actually, I think a lot of that has to do with a uh, specific uh, tax, a tax credit for purchasing a house that took all of these buyers and pulled them forward, artificially adjusting the numbers. But this was what the market was doing at the time. Anyways, uh, next chart I wanted to look at on this is, you know, based on last price, as you can see, we're a little bit down here. Not great. Home sales index floating around down there. So if you're reading Zero Hedge, it's like doom and gloom, but I wanted to bring that to you. Um, one of the quotes from NAR on this thing is, a slight up return reflects a modest improvement in housing affordability, primarily because mortgage rates descended to 6.5 in August. They're below that now, finishing up September. All right. However, contract signings remain near secular lows, even as home prices keep marching to new record highs. I said across the U.S. spending sales rose in the Midwest, South and the West, but the Northeast index fell to its lowest point since the start of the pandemic in 2020. So that's what we got going on for Zero Hedge. Um, what I want to talk to you particularly about is what's going on local. All right. I want, I'm going to do a little bit reverse thing. Here's our numbers. Then we're going to talk about these numbers. All right. So actives this week are 19,397, up 446 from the prior year or prior week. All right. That reflects 2,208 new listings, up 94. Our contracts are at 2,085, up 95. Closings were at 1,374. Coming soon to an MLS near you is 700 new listings. Our supply is at 77. Our demand is at 73.5 giving us a Crawford Report Index number of 95.4. The reason why I wanted to point this out to you is because I, I think we're going to break over 2,000. All right, inventory has been growing substantially since 22, uh, 2022. All right, our lowest inventory on the chart since I've started doing this, which was literally St. Patrick's Day of COVID hell. I think that was 21 you know and i was you know for those who don't know i started doing the the spreadsheet that i used for this back then because i was had a low appraisal and i was trying to cut and it was the 
if you were ever going to have a low appraisal, having a low appraisal come in at the same time your real estate market just blew up, right, is a really great time to argue with the other side of why they need to drop their price. And all he had to do is go look at the MLS and realize, holy crap, nobody's buying houses all of a sudden and we have a contract. All right, let's get this thing done. And Bob's your uncle. So I've been tracking this all. And we were down in the 4,000s, okay? But I wanted to go and check how much more inventory we picked up. Now, I've been running, I had these little charts that on my spreadsheet that have been, I've been using to just go to that general visual feel, but they were so horribly broken because they're, I, I, I put them together so long ago and I've never really recreated them from scratch like I'd have to that they just don't work right anymore. So, but a couple numbers I can tell you. Okay. This is the 25th of September. Okay. Uh, it's actually the 26th when you're watching this. Uh, so I went back and looked at when the high points were. All right. Most inventory that I, that I charted in 23 and 22. All right. It was November 24th of 23. We hit last year 16,040 listings on the MLS. All right. We've beat that already. All right. The year before that was 2022. All right. And that was when we were just getting into the real serious surge of inventory because of the interest rates. We were at 20,632 was the high mark of 2022. And that was in September 26 or October 26. All right. In both cases, September was a run up to we eventually peaking out and we will peak out in inventory. All right. Sometime routine in October and November. Going back as far as my chart goes, you always see this is peak. All right. We're in September and we've already beaten last year. Okay. I expect to continue peaking until late October, early November or so, maybe in November. And then we'll start seeing that die off just simply for the fact that people will not be putting their houses on the market for the holidays. And then January comes around and whoa, Nelly. January 2nd, this is when all, all hell breaks loose. I'm, I'm really seriously anticipating that. Um, for the people who are right on the bubble, like I said, there, there's this little window. People do not want to be buying a house around Christmas. They do not want to be buying a house around the holidays. Right? And that's part of the reason why we have this run up. The kids are now in school. You're not going to suddenly pull your kids out of the school that they've only been in there for a month and want to move them somewhere else. All right. So this is what we're looking at on the inventory side. I expect to be breaking over six or uh, 20,000. I honestly think we think we can beat 22 easy at this rate. I mean, hold on for a second. Wow. That was so bad. <clears throat> I just tried to pause the recording, open up an Excel spreadsheet. And my laptop just froze up. It just froze up. And I really hope I was able to actually recover what I already recorded. I don't know, know what's going on at this point. But I was going to bring up the spreadsheet. So, And then I tried clicking on the spreadsheet and then it didn't start. And now all of a sudden it's starting down at the bottom. How odd is that? Let's Hold on. Hear me out on this. Let me see if I can get this thing going. Okay. Guys, see the numbers? Okay. When I say numbers, this is my idea what numbers look like. All right. And I sit here and go through everything and try to interpret what you see going on here with what's going on in reality. All right. So you can see how I got this thing set up here. Yeah. Let me do this. Okay. You know, if you're watching this on your, uh, on your phone, you're not going to be still any of this kind of stuff, but you know, <clears throat> as you as I scroll through the time periods and stuff like that, I did not think to put uh, years on when I first started this. I didn't think I'd be using the spreadsheet for that long, which is why I'm so hyper focused when I do new stuff. Always making sure that what I, whatever I start, I'm doing it with the mind of I might be using this thing in the next you know three or four years. So let's start it off right every time. So, but. You know, like I said, there's my first thing that I ever did, March 16th. All right. And then as we scroll down, and then I'll, I got 
creative and it started to start doing the new listings and the pendings. All right. And so on and so forth. But we will go all the way down to, okay, I think we're in 2023 looking at these numbers right now. Okay, here we are. This is us this week. All right, 2025. Now, there are numbers on here that you guys don't see because I don't tell you about back on market anymore. All right. And I don't tell you the pending in the UCB and the CCBS because now I just replace that all with contracts. All right. But we can go back and notice if it's black in this column, the change column, that means we're adding it, you know, it's going upwards from last week. All right. You see it in red, like right here. All right. That's inventory going down. So, like I was saying, on the you know November twenty fourth, twenty twenty three, we capped out for the year at sixteen thousand and forty, and then for all the month of December we started going down. Okay, in inventory, and then January tenth, that reflects that first first week when I tell you everything goes crazy. All right, we suddenly went up in new listings by eight hundred and seventy five. You can see we actually went up January third. Okay, between that, right after Christmas, all right, but you don't see that reflect on the act active numbers because guess what? Pendings and UCBs and our contracts actually went up. See what I'm talking about? And we can go back to the previous year along those lines and see roughly the same pattern. Okay. Now, in this particular case, we capped out in October. All right, 26th of October, and then we went on a long slide. Inventory just kept dropping and dropping. Hey, little bounce. There we go. Dropped a little bit more. We went all the way to August before inventory started picking back up. All right. And then, and we're going up substantially. I mean, look at that. From the, the low where we went, we really started kicking off at um, 11,131 to our first bump up. I mean, 11,000, 16,000, that's 5,000 new listings. That went from November, that was August to, to November, when that surge sort of kicks in, all right? And you notice on the new listing side, all right, they were just coming in. I mean, that fo that, that uh, FOSO is going into the bucket, but it was the contract side over here, kept getting smaller and smaller amount of contracts. So what does this mean to you? Um, one, it means that Ray spends way too much time paying attention to numbers. All right. But what that also means for you guys, give me just a second. I'm going to close out some stuff and try to get, there we go. There's a really good question here of whether or not My screen is like literally blinking out. Once again, I'm like really concerned. Maybe I am not actually getting everything recorded I wanted to record. If that happens, you guys aren't going to see any of this. And I'm just going to do a placeholder for this for this weekend. I think that will work. Okay. So if we're, if we're at, um, you know, with, with these numbers and everything coming up, I'm expecting to be going into next year with more inventory than we've seen in quite some time. All right. Um, I expect a whole bunch of buyers to start coming onto the market. Somebody, some agent posted the other day that she had been told by her lender that uh, by the end of the year we'll be in the fours. I think that's a fever dream. I don't think we're going to be seeing fours, right? but we'll, hey, you know, I mean, we could be having fives right now. My data is a day old. Okay. Um, and, you know, if you can get low six, you can buy down to the fives, right? And, you know, based on talking to the streets, fives is when things get really, really crazy. Now, is, are those low interest rates going to be enough to get people to buy during the holidays? Right. I'm not tracking from the last election. I don't know whether or not people put off buying a house during an election season. Maybe they want to see how things are going to go. Maybe there's like, yeah, are we moving out of Mesa or are we moving out of the United States? Are we... Staying in California or are we moving to Arizona on our way to Texas? I mean, we don't know how these things are going to impact. So anyways, my advice to you is always the same. If you need a house, buy a house. If you have extra houses, sell a house. Either way, you should give me a call. All right. If the if you qualify to buy a house at the price point you want to pay, that will get you a house you want in the neighborhoods you want. You can refinance 
when the rates go down, even if today's rate is not exactly what you want. But just to point out to you, my client, at the beginning of this looking out at houses, her rates have gone down. Her final rate that she's actually closing on is lower than what her lender was telling her before. <clears throat> I, can, I can see this happening for a lot of, you know, for a lot of things right now. So there's an even money chance I might start recording these things at home just so I can use another computer and have it more dedicated spe specifically to recording, you know, um, I, I spent way too much time looking at actually getting a new computer this week and just could not justify it. I don't play the newest, latest, greatest games. I don't need all the Wazoo stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm a simple guy. I have simple, simple needs, simple desires. I like simple music. I like kicking back, drinking a simple drink, watching the children and pets around the water simply, not driving any, to anything flooded because I have a very small car that would probably float out to sea. All right. I simply work my circles. I simply thank you all for watching this episode. And you guys have a really, really great weekend. I'll talk to you later. <laughs>